So say with me. Oh, it should be interesting. I wonder what's gonna be happening today. Oh, okay, we're going live. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, da, da, da. What are we doing? What are we doing? I'm doing whatever I want to do. It's my channel. I can do what I like. I'm going to put some music on in the background, so hopefully it's not going to get blocked, which would be a pain in the backside if it does. Uh, but hopefully we'll have a few people. I've got a bit early today. Let's turn that down a bit. Oh! Oh. Stretch out, stretch it out. I'm gonna see who comes on a line to see me today. Hopefully everyone is well. If you're watching this on playback, hello, hello, hello. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to check out uh, the new videos uploaded. We did uh, Alec Bartar's stuff. I think I've got a bit of Nothing Game playing in the background. For those who haven't heard, that's my other, that was my old band, Nothing Game. Uh, song is Relic. So you can have a bit of music going on in the background, which is uh, got some Nothing Game. We've got some new Project 42 songs that have just been worked on at the moment. Nothing's finished. It's all kind of just doing its own thing. Uh, today we're going to go through some of the questions that have been asked. There's about, I don't know, there's about 20, 30 questions. Um, the other thing I'm also doing today, I'll be taking song reaction requests. So if you want to request a song, please do uh, put it down in the comments and the chat feed. Uh, I'll make a note of those and obviously try and add them to the list. Um, I'm also trying to raise funds for upgrading the studio and doing some bits around the camera um, and also the mic. So if you want to send a super chat, uh, it is always greatly appreciated. If you want to send a super chat with your request, I will ensure it gets done in the November period. Uh, so we do have those currently set up. So that should be uh, should be fun to do. Um, so what was I going to cover? Yes, we're going to do Project 42 tracks update. So what am I doing with that? Uh, obviously going to talk a little bit about Alep Bata. Uh, should be fun. Uh, what else are we going to do? Talk about the obviously the raising funds, what I'm going to do for the channel. We've got the 30, 20 or 30 questions. We've done the, the final countdown was uploaded earlier today. Uh, so we've done two of those. We did uh, the one with vocals, which I will potentially add a new version of that, uh, where I've just tweaked the edit on that. Uh, and then obviously the non-vocal one. What have we got here? This is something that's just loaded live. Uh, it's a song called Corona Free that's in the background there. If the music is either too quiet in, in the back of the speakers or it's too loud, let me know in the comments, in the live chat, uh, and I will obviously adjust that because I've kept it quite low on my end because I'm talking, uh, but it's more for your sort of background uh, for you. Should be almost kind of like hardly able. Should be able to like just literally in that background, just about to hear it, I guess. Um, okay, so Project Forty Two. So what am I doing on that? So I've actually got quite a lot of tracks to do. So I did. I started doing all this stuff earlier in the year on um, with the Corona the coronavirus coming out. I think a lot of musicians started doing it, sort of writing material. So I write about eight songs. Uh, at the moment, they're all kind of in basic project like Corona 1, Corona 2, Corona 3. Uh, this is one that I think is playing is Corona 3. Um, so we're working on that at the moment. Then I've also still got, uh, I think there's about 15 other songs, that, 15 to 20 other songs that I'm currently working on. Um, actually, no, it must be more than that. It's close to 30 songs that I've got currently working on for other sort of pieces. So I'm hoping to do that over the winter got a bit of time um i actually came up with a song earlier today which was kind of cool uh which i'm going to kind of post online i'm going to share that um but yes so yeah what else are we doing we're, we're obviously as i said we're going to try and raise some money so if you want to sort of donate to the channel patreon patreon we're going to do that uh really important if you want to sign up to the patreon we've got the free the five the ten dollar ten dollar one's cool because you get to pick three songs every month for me to react to uh, you know, also at six months get a set of t-shirt, CD, guitar pick and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. So uh, worth checking that one out. So let's go through the relevant questions that you guys have asked me about. So, um, 
Okay, first question I have was favourite era of music. Um, so most people are going to expect that I'm going to be talking about rock, metal, and probably 90s, 80s. Uh, I would actually say that my favourite era of music is probably late 80s and early 90s. I did like 80s, early 80s pop, like the 82, 83. Uh, I thought pop music from there was good. Uh, late day pop music from the late 80s was awful. Uh, rock music and heavy metal from the late 80s and 90s was awesome. And that's probably my favourite era of music that I listen to. Uh, so thank you for that question. My favourite genre. Uh, so what is my favourite genre? Uh, this very much depends on my circumstances. Uh, it varies from hard rock uh, into country. I do like some pop music. I like funk. Uh, I love that the baseline of funk, and I love disco. Anything that's got is cool. It's catchy. It's hooky. It makes you move to. It's cool. Um, I'm, I'm sure people will be a bit fun weird that I like disco, but that actually I really do like disco tracks. Uh, they're great fun. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a cool one to go and check out. Right. Oh, sorry, I've got a couple of things just flashing up on my screen. Uh, hey Passio, hope you're well as well. Yeah, I'm having a good day. It's it's sorry, my screen's doing weird things. It's trying to update stuff for some reason. There we go. Get rid of that. Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, Passio, I'm having a good day. I've been doing a lot of reactions today. Um, so I've been doing all of the Patreon reactions. So uh, all of the ten dollar a month Patreons get to pick free songs. So that's been pretty much my entire day so far, is going and checking those out. We've done some weird bands. Uh, some bands I've heard before, like In Flames was done today, Dark Tranquility. Uh, I did a song. Oh, there was a few other ones I did, some really weird ones. Uh, again, let me know if the music is too loud in the background. It shouldn't be based on the stream in effect, but it, it might be a bit louder. We've got, currently got Nothing Game Dollhouse, which is my old band. Uh, off the album Hello Rhetoric. Hi Dippo, nice to see you. Um, what else have we got going on? Questions, what's the next one you said? Uh, best band I've reacted to. Okay, so the best band I've reacted to is a really difficult question because I like lots of different bands. I like lots of different styles. I would say the best band that I've reacted to that I really continue to like and continue to listen to is probably be Poets of the Fall. Uh, I've really, really got into them. Um, so they've been really, really cool. So I'll just turn that music down a little bit. Um, but apart from that, The Warning's been cool. Nightwish, I've really liked them. Uh, they've kind of stood out for me. Uh, so they, yeah, they, they were probably my favourite ones that I've kind of checked out uh, overall. Uh, well, I've got what? When did I learn to play music, and what formal training have I had? Okay, so this was asked. Um, uh, I mean, basically, the idea at the moment is these were all questions that I've pulled off of comment pages over multiple, multiple videos. Uh, so I wanted to try and get as many questions that people have asked me. And a lot of these questions I have responded to in comments. But obviously, unless you've watched that video or you check the comments out, you wouldn't have known what my answer was. So I thought it'd be interesting to cover them all off. But as far as formal training, um, I did make my notes here. I've, I've made notes to all these questions. Uh, I started playing at around 14, so that's when uh, my mum bought me this el little electronic kit that had these four little pads, it had like a little kick drum pedal at the bottom, and I, I learnt to play Aerosmith's Crying, I think it was, was the song I learnt. Um, and then at the age of 16, I then started, uh, I, got, I think I went out, when I first started working, I bought my first drum kit for £160 from a second-hand shop and it wasn't even a full kit it was bits of a kit and then I bought another kit and I made it into a massive double kit and this is basically uh, I made this massive kit I had it I had like timpani drums on it it had two floor toms it had four rack toms it had double kicks I had about nine cymbals all going around and I couldn't properly play at the time so and I was literally learning on this kit we, was, we set up in a garage somewhere uh, with no soundproofing so you can imagine it's a metal garage door it was vibrating friends of mine were learning to play at the same time and we learned we started playing uh for whom the bell tolls by metallica enter sandman uh 
And that was at the age of 16. And then that started my first ever band I played in. We wrote a few songs. Never did anything with it. There's one song which was called Nicotine. Uh, which basically, if I remember the song, this was the first song we ever wrote at the age of 16. So this is 20... Hang on, that means it's 24, 26 years ago. And literally the song went... Nicotine I crave nicotine My veins burn nicotine They live in me It permeates my body Permeates my soul somewhere up here then it just kind of went so it was real just simple chord progressions and basically that was it and then we just went kind of heavy on it and it was really weird uh and that was our only ever song it was depressing uh so yeah there you go so that was what that was a band we started and then i never went for any formal training i never did uh studying courses etc i think the way i tend to learn music is i learn just about whatever i need to do for that particular piece so if i like need to learn a certain chord i will learn that chord for that song and then i might learn another chord if i need it for something else i've never been one of these people for music kind of that wants to learn for the sake of learning so like drums i will learn a certain style of drums as far as what i needed i only learned like double kick stuff even though i had a double kick drum kit when i was younger at the age of 16 i never learned to use double kick at all i just had the kit like that uh because i never needed it i never needed it until i did um really i needed it in nothing gained i did use it a little bit in my band before that which was called costa mojin um and that was that was interesting it was kind of i used it a little bit on i think one or two songs but really it was just a kind of a throwaway effect if you like on the drum kit but i didn't really need to so i didn't use it i didn't learn it and then as i got into nothing game we used it on tracking and, and when we used to track ideas or get ideas together we used to program the drums so myself and the guitarist would sit down would go in the studio or his house in his studio room would get a riff and he'd play me a riff or something and then what i would do is i would program all the drums of what i wanted the drums to sound like and then i would have to go and learn those drums and so what happened when we went to record hollow rhetoric the second nothing gained album i'd written all these like double kick parts and then we went in the studio and we had to track the effectively do the guide track so we had what we basically did there was we had the songs on the album in song order and the guy just set us all up with all mics in the in the live room uh, and basically said look play the songs from start to finish and that will give me my guide and we did it and afterwards he sat me down and he went right on three of those songs you're playing double kick but your double kick's awful and i was like ah and he went we're meant to be tracking drums tomorrow and he said your drums aren't ready and that was the hardest thing and it was my biggest learn i got from that which was don't go into the studio unless you're ready to do it so I, i've kind of taken that on board but yeah that's kind of my learning process and i kind of wish i had done formal training especially kind of learning about uh a lot of the theory behind music i think it would have been cool but uh maybe i don't know if, don't know if i feel like it's a bit too late to kind of start that but uh, my main thing I am trying to learn at the moment is soloing, uh, so that I can do a little bit more on that one. Okay, next question was, favourite Alep Bartar songs? So obviously, I've done a lot of Alep Bartar. <laughs> Not as many as some other reactors, uh, but I've done quite a lot, uh, as we all seem to want to check him out. Um, so... It's difficult because I'm not sure if the question was whether it was a cover song or one of the originals that he's written. So I've kind of answered both of those. As far as the originals, the ones that I've checked out, because obviously I haven't checked out all of his songs, I would say Pandemic is the one that I really liked, mainly because it was fun to do a collaboration on. Uh, and from a cover point of view, I have to go with, I guess, Bohemian Rhapsody because of what he put into it and how difficult that was uh, to kind of get that vibe of all the different instrumentation. So, uh, yeah. I thought that was very cool, although I like a lot of his songs. So, hi Faisal and hi Benedictus, welcome to the live chat. 
Uh, if you, again, if you want to do any requests for future reactions, put them in the live chat comments, and I will try and pull those off later. As said before, I am trying to raise funds for some upgrades to the studio. So if you want to guarantee a um, a reaction, uh, you can also do a super chat. Uh, and I will definitely go and make sure I pick that one up. So every every donation to the channel is greatly appreciated at the moment. Uh, hi, Sayhat. Uh, welcome to the channel. Okay. So we've covered off the first five questions. Favourite collaboration I've done? So obviously I've done a few with Alep. Um, I have also done a couple with uh, Anwar uh, as well. So he's I did a couple with his ones, which I really enjoyed doing. I did uh, a Green Day song... Uh, I also did. Is it almost easy? I think was one of his ones. I, I know. I know. I did a couple of uh, a couple of ones with his one. Um, but as far as the collaborations, I think each one has been very different. They've had different reasons behind it. I think Hotel California was a great one to do, and I really enjoyed doing Num as well. And the reason behind that was. I think with Hotel California, we, I was able to get Truth Surge and he allowed me to use his video of his a cappella performance of Hotel California. And it was good fun for me kind of mixing up the vocals, guitar, bass and stuff like that. Uh, and then for Numb, I was able to get the old holo, uh, the old um, Nothing Game vocalist, uh, Emma, or now Tasney, uh, as her performance name goes, uh, to come and do that and record that for me. So it was great to get some of the other people and the collaborations because the challenge with the collaborations is once you've done once where you've put keyboards on or vocals on, you, the next time you do a collaboration, you, you have to always constantly try to upgrade yourself. You can't kind of just strip it back. Uh, and that's why that one becomes a little bit more challenging. And it's, I get asked why I don't pick some collaborations over the other. So, for instance, uh, Alec does a version of Extremes More Than Words. Um, and that's an amazing song. It's it, I love the song to pieces, but there's nothing I could add to it. I physically couldn't put anything more on it. It would just be uh me maybe playing an acoustic in the background or doing a little bit maybe on the cajon that's about it so uh nothing i could do on that one so i didn't feel that it was a reason for me to add whereas with the final countdown carry at least i can kind of get that style in there um and i looked at the fight when i did the final countdown uh collaboration the key i initially i'd heard that one a few months back and i thought i straight away skipped over it reason behind skipping it was just because it was so slow uh, and I saw some other people had done that collaboration. They had done the piece, they played the drums and done that one. Whereas I I just thought if I'm going to do it, I've got to update, update the tempo and I've got to do something a bit different with it. So, um, yeah, so that was the reason I've done that one. Uh, what are we listening to at the moment? We've got a, uh, was this Product of Sin by Nothing Game. This was off our Hollow Rhetoric album, which is kind of cool. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to the live chat. Um, yes, so what else we got? We've, so we've got lots of questions that have been answered so far. As remembered, so uh, I'm playing out some of the stuff off of uh, Hollow Rhetoric and Ascent, which are the first two albums from Nothing Game in the background. The reason I'm putting this music on rather than doing live reactions is I used to do live reactions and the problem is the stream gets hit with copyright block and you suddenly lose the picture and you lose the sound and until that gets resolved. So you just kind of have to take that off Um so I'm just playing some of that. You've also got some new material that I'm working on for Project 42. Uh, that's only in the stages of guide tracks. So when I talk about guide tracks, these are literally just the drums and guitar riffs that have been recorded, but they've not final recordings. They're not the polished guitars. This is kind of just to give me an idea of how the song's going to sound. So, and Because I, I don't write the final guitars or record them until I've got the vocals, and all the songs at the moment are in the stage of I'm struggling with vocals as I'm not a lyricist. Lyricist? Not sure if that's a word or not, but... Okay, next question. How many instruments do I play? Interesting question. Because uh, it really depends on what you class is playing. Um, so I play... Obviously drums. I've got the Cajon, which is this box thing behind me. Uh, I've got bass, uh, electric, guitar... Uh, there's the ukulele. I can play harmonica. I've got the scales and the keys, so I can work a harmonica. Keyboard, so that's around about seven. 
uh, to varying de- levels of skill level. Uh, but I can use all of those instruments to make a song to some degree, so I can add all of those in. Uh, and then obviously you've just got the whatever you can pull off of electronic or d- design through like software, etc. Uh, so yeah, six. It gets me through what I need to do as far as recording. Uh, so I was just working on a, a, an idea of a song that just kind of popped into my head, which is actually one of the questions on how do you write songs. So I'm going to cover that near the end. Um, okay, how much do you make from YouTube videos? The answer simply is this is not a lot. Um, and the, the reason behind that is, especially with reaction videos, so you need to have a lot of views to make any sort of money on YouTube. Uh, reactors tend to not make a lot because uh, all the videos get copyrighted pretty much across the board uh, which it doesn't mean that we get strikes what we get is copyright claims where the record companies claim the they actually claim the money so it goes to the record label not necessarily to the artist though so it'll be the record label that gets the money I don't it depends on their I guess what they've agreed and how much they've agreed to pay um, but yeah, so I I would get only on so on collaborations I tend to get a share, and that will either be split with either Alec Butter or the original. Like on the final countdown, it was basically I split it with the with whoever owns the final countdown riff or music, which is not necessarily the band Europe. It will be the publisher, uh, so they get half the money of any revenue I make. Uh, so I made so last twenty eight days I've had eight hundred and. 60,000 views and I've made 52 pounds uh, so that's basically what I'll make on it most people will make more money from uh, sponsorship so when you see all these people talking about uh, go and check out the latest game raid or war machines or whatever you want to get whatever the thing is they're sponsoring that's the, or the latest VPN for whatever it might be that's basically what they're talking about uh that's how they make their money so I, unfortunately reaction channels don't tend to get anything for that which is a shame okay what have we got going else uh who won the 2020 top 10 challenge list it's a very good question because i stopped doing that kind of after a while because one i was doing 10 videos per per person uh, and i think we had I think we had 30 comments on that particular channel uh, challenge. So we had 300 videos that I needed to do. They take time uh, to do so. It took me a long time to do it. Uh, but I'm kind of glad we got through it and I got to the end and I finished it and I moved on to the next thing and the next project. And I never really went back and scored it. So I had to go back last night and go through all the videos, find out who scored it, look at the lists. And it was interesting. Cause some people had some really cool songs but they'd have like a really bad song that i really didn't like uh much in their list and that kind of threw their overall scores so i have the winners uh let me have a look i did pull them up so in third place uh is brian loke uh who won the previous challenge so he's obviously got a good list in uh so well done to brian loke for his third place second place was stranger danger and the winner this time round is live music sucks uh, so live music sucks your top 10 challenges was the, my favorite uh, so make sure to email me uh, your contact details so I can send out your winning prize for the top 10 challenge list um, let me know if anyone wants to start looking at things like that again I might do something in next year because there is I guess the thoughts for plans for next year which is actually the next question what's the plan for the channel in 2021 uh... I think everyone gets to the end of the year and they start thinking the same thing. They kind of feel like, well, what, what, what am I going to do? What's uh, what's the plan going to be? Um, I kind of thought, well, I obviously want to do more actual music. So the collaborations are definitely that. And not just with Alec Barta. I'm looking to see which other ones I can do. I like it when I can fulfill them. I have contacted a few other reactors and stuff that do music uh, about trying to do some joint collaborations not just me taking their version and mixing it with my version i actually want us to write something properly together rather than just copy and paste and i'd rather do that with alec bartar as well but it's uh it's a challenge to do that so uh yeah definitely want to do some more collaborations i really want to finish some of these project 42 songs uh i've got over 30 songs just sitting there waiting actually there's probably about 40 songs at this point in time that are all kind of waiting to be done 
um, and they don't, which I really need a vocalist. So if there's any vocalists out there that would love to support the track, what have you got playing at the moment? We've got Corona Force. This is one of the tracks I started writing over the last few months. It's got no lyrics on, so I am looking for a vocalist. I'm looking for a lyricist uh, to help with songs. So if you're a good singer, I would like to get involved. Please let me know. Um, I want to do some more interviews with bands. So Imperial Age, I did the interviews with them uh, last year. I want to try and get some more. So as the channel gets bigger, there's a better chance for me to do that. Uh, I would like to do some live gig reviews and do some more live footage and talk behind the scenes with bands. And I want to do more work with uh, lesser known bands, unsigned bands, because that was the original purpose of this reaction channel was to do that. Because a lot of reaction channels primarily focus on big names, big bands, videos come out and they want to get as many views as possible and views are important because views are basically the way to make money on youtube it's subscribe subscriptions are great because it lets people know as long as they've clicked the notification but basically views are key um but i'd rather get a bigger subscriber base and do more lesser known bands and try and help build unsigned bands and lesser known bands and do things like that uh so i am setting up a po box just a heads up uh there'll be you'll see some of that on some of the reaction videos i'll be talking about that i'm just waiting for the po box address to come through uh but if unsigned bands want to send any stuff for backdrops t-shirts stuff like that anything i can help promote on screen i would definitely do it and also if you any of you are, uh, are artists in any way have got anything that's really cool you want to promote you've got like a, a craft business that you sell craft stuff and you want to send something in here for me to talk about i'll be doing that through the po box so that should be quite cool uh but i just want to make it a little bit more different um to some of the others out there as there are so many reactors out there uh what else we got here hi naim uh padu uh pasio i'd love a challenge like that next year i was gonna say pasio i don't remember you doing a list when it came out i know you did one the previous year Uh, and you didn't add to the list yeah so the thing was is when people were adding to that list of the last top 10 challenge because i was doing so much work on those top 10 challenges lists i think it took about four months five months before i got to people's top 10 so uh yes it was it was interesting to do but i won't do 10 i might do a top three or something like that or i might get someone or i might just do a great i, I started the greatest song i don't know if i want to do greatest song but i'm just gonna see I might do something along that line where people get to pick a song and throw it in there and I'll give it a limited period of time or something. I'll come up with something as a bit of a challenge, which could be quite fun to do. Uh, and I'll throw it out there um, and maybe we'll do some polls and some voting. And I don't know, I'm going to work it out. It's also I want to try and increase the Patreon because the Patreon's quite important. Uh, we've got a few Patreons now which support the channel uh, with the free, the five and the ten dollar Patreons. Three dollars are great because they are just literally you donate three dollars you get access to the videos which i think there's about 30 or 40 videos that were never available to to watch on youtube uh the five dollar ones get the same but you also get to pick a song every single month that i will react to and the ten dollar ones get to pick three songs every month plus after six months you get a t-shirt cd and guitar pick sent out and then every 12 months you'll get another t-shirt from me so um yeah so patreon's very cool so if you haven't already signed up for the patreon great way to keep supporting this channel and i will be doing a lot more content over the next couple of months because i'll be uh i actually kind of my my day job is landscape gardening and throughout no effectively throughout december and january i pretty much don't work so i will be pretty much focusing on the youtube channel but obviously i need to try and make it some sort of viable from a monetary point of view so that's kind of one of my big things at the moment okay question why do i have two channels when you do reactions on both channels <laughs> good questions i can't remember it might i don't know if it was you pasio or if it was eduardo or someone else made a mention when i was talking about i was talking about the channel a few months back and um i was getting frustrated as i always do you know me with my videos I kind of get a little stressed out about things and I'm not sure what I want to do and how I want to focus on it and what to do differently and whether or not this is when I was going, should I do a top 10, should I not do that, should I score it, shouldn't I score it, etc, etc. And what then happened, uh, someone said well, it would be cool if you had a clear 
a channel for reactions and a channel for other stuff. The problem with that is I can't just take all the reactions off this channel, so I kind of still need to do the Dave Does pull. And I thought, well, if I could separate the reactions out, then that would be the way of doing it. So the Dave Does, I'll continue to do all the collaborations, original contents, behind the scenes, making ofs. I want to do more of that, interviews. But I still want to do some reactions, which would just be kind of like, I liked it, got the vibe, got the feeling sort of reactions. And then for the Musician Reacts one, I want to do more talking about the music elements. So... For that one, I want to do more like in the studio stuff where I talk about what's going on in the studio. I did the sound check with the band The Warning. That was cool to talk about that. Uh, talk about the lyrical content of the songs. Talk about the writing process. Maybe talk about the structure of the songs. So I want to kind of give two elements of it. I was going to have a separate backdrop, but to be honest, taking the backdrop up and down each time is just a pain, to be quite honest. Uh, I was going to do green screen, but uh, again, it's just trying to differentiate. And maybe that is something I will do in the long run. I think I'd need a better camera. And that's, again, why I'm trying to raise funds through the channel. So if anyone wants to donate, you can do it through a super chat. Uh, so please feel free if anyone would like to donate on the super chat. If you want to request a song as well for me to check on the reactions through November, you can put it in the comments as well. And I will definitely try to pull some stuff off of that uh, later before I shut down the live stream. Okay, next question. Who is your favourite Asian metal band? I don't think this has really changed much since I've done it because I've not done too many different Asian metal bands because we've done Audius recently. Um, I've done Love Bite since I've done that. And there's a couple of others that I've done since I did my last top 10 Asian metal band lists. Um, but I would say right now, it's currently a three-way split between three bands that I really like. Uh, and that's Band Made, Maximum the Hormone, and Burger Kill. So Burger Kill weren't in my top ten before, but I recently did... I think it's called uh, An Elegy. And they did it with an orchestra. And I was absolutely blown away by it. It hasn't actually... I haven't even posted that video up there yet. I haven't even done the edit on it. I've got about 30 videos that I've recorded the actual reactions to. But I haven't even had a chance to edit them. Because I'm just film, filming, filming, filming. And then when I get a second of an evening, I'm going to do all the edits. Uh, but yes, they're my favourite three at the moment. So although people sort of say I'm harsh on bandmate, I don't think I'm harsh. I was just It depends what mindset I'm in when I reacted to them. Uh, but yeah, Bam Made, Maximum the Hormone, and unfortunately I can't even do any reactions to Maximum the Hormone because they always get blocked. Uh, and they actually were the one reason why the original Musician Reacts channel was shut down was because of them. But yeah, they, I really like Maximum the Hormone. Okay, let's have a quick look where else is going. Uh, hi Sulis, uh, you can't speak English, don't worry. Thank you for supporting the channel anyway. Uh... Thank you, Passio. Either way, it's not a problem. Uh, don't worry about that at all. Uh, you can support by just watching, checking out videos. That's always that's greatly appreciated. Uh, I am going to upload this as a video afterwards, and hopefully I'll be able to put uh, subscription, uh, sorry, subtitles in for those of you uh, that don't speak English. But thank you very much for watching, and I will do sort of different topics except, or different things on there. So uh, what else have we got? Uh, da, 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 da. what else we got Fashion. why don't you do live collaborations with Alec Bartar rather than playing along with his songs well I would absolutely love to do a live collaboration with Alec Bartar but he's very difficult to get hold of uh, it's simple as that um, so basically there's no real way that I found of contacting him via email or anything like that um I would love to speak to him to find out if we could pick a song and he could send me some ideas and we could do like a Zoom collaboration or come up with some ideas on it. But the only way I can do it at the moment is to currently do the current setup, which is the same as most people. I think he wants to keep himself to himself and doesn't want to kind of go any further than what he's already doing. So, so be it. But yes, he's very cool. Uh, next question. How good is Alip Bartar's temp <gasps> tempo control? Um... Well, I've actually just covered this in the uh, the video I uploaded called The Making of uh, Final Countdown. As a whole, his tempo control is very good. But you have to remember that when he's recording, he's not... His, it's, his, it's, his, it's his internal chronometer. He's purely doing it 
with the idea of what he's playing in line. He's not thinking about other people playing along with him. So he doesn't necessarily need to be on the beat all the time. Um, generally, he's pretty good. I did, on the final countdown, I had to do multiple uh, vocal edits. Because at certain points he extends out where he doesn't necessarily need to or he shortens. So I had to kind of chop the vocals up into pieces and either speed them up or drag them into the right position. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody was probably the one that I didn't have to do that very often. But on every other one I've had to. Uh, but if people then say he's perfect and he matches up with the vocals, I've obviously done my editing job perfectly. Uh, and it makes complete sense when I've done that one. Okay, what's the next question I had on that you guys have asked me? How long does it take to complete a collaboration? That really does vary. Um, a general rule from when I start doing it to so when I pick out the song to when I've finished it, I actually do it over lots of days. So I do it breaks into different bits of learning the song. So once I pick the song, I have to learn what he's playing. I have to decide what instruments I'm going to play. Then I have to get a drum track recorded that I need to work on. So I usually have to either learn the song drum-wise or learn a rough approximation of it. Then I have to record it, get my tempo tied up with him, um, which takes time. So I worked out roughly, it's about eight hours is spent. So it's about a day. Uh, of non-stop work if I was to do it from start to finish it would take me about eight hours to do the full thing from learning the song to uploading the video at the end so it's not too bad uh, there are a lot of the other reactors who do collaborations probably do less because they don't do as much instrumentation so they might only do drums only or they might just do a violin or one of the other uh, some of the others or piano or a vocal bit so it also depends on how many takes they do. So I do a lot of different takes until I'm happy with what I've done. Because um, I, I record the takes as I'm practicing. until Because sometimes I'll be practicing something and I'll get a nice uh, highlight or I'll do something on it and it's kind of cool. And I'll keep that take. And then I'll suddenly decide I want to put a lead part over it or I want to put some keyboards over the top. So I've then got to go and work out what that's going to look like. So yeah, about eight hours. Uh, Papatador says hello there you can explore traditional music of Indonesia and combine with your music yes I can definitely do that um, I am going to look at more of that I've got some Indonesian metal bands that people want me to check out as well so I will be looking at doing some stuff on that which should be quite interesting uh, and yeah I want to do some more collaborations but that's again what I'll be planning to do over the winter months before really February when it kind of kicks in uh, what have we got Damawan, uh, hello there. Thank you. Big thumbs up to you as well. Uh, next question. Which band that you've reacted to has had the biggest swing in your personal opinion? Either bad to good or good to bad. Uh, so I think there hasn't been that many. Uh, there's not been people where I've gone, I've really not liked them and then I've suddenly really liked them or I've really liked them and really not liked them after a while. Um... I think the two ones that are the obvious ones that come to mind where I didn't really like them or didn't really engage them and then started to really like them by the end is probably In Flames and The Warning. Uh, they're the only ones that where I've actually gone to the point where like it, The Warning I was kind of like when I first heard them I liked Dust to Dust but I didn't like the next two songs I reacted to and then I got the album as part of an album review and I did all the songs and I actually listened to the album for quite a while. And in Flames, I got from the point of really not liking the band at the beginning, the first few songs I did, to really liking the latter song. So, and I've just done another In Flames reaction, which again I've just recorded today as part of the Patreon. So again, just a reminder: if you, for those that have just joined the feed and haven't seen some of the early questions, I've talked about the Patreon. So if you join the Patreon, you get to pick free fit songs for the ten dollars a month, and the five dollars a month you get to pick one song. And these are guaranteed. I have to do them, but don't get. Don't get too cocky on it because some people tried the old uh, or we'll give you free 30 minute songs to react to. They can no, not be longer than 10 minutes per song because uh, I can't be spending an hour and a half doing free songs. That's insane. Uh, okay, so yeah, the one in Flames would probably be the two that stick to my head. Okay, why do you have so many different intros? <laughs> yeah, I do have a lot of intros. Uh, there's a few that I still use. 
there's a few that I no longer, so the original Musician Rex one I don't use. But I think all the other ones for Dave does are still in circulation. And I would say the reason why I tend to do the um, the different intros was I set up these massive long intros. The problem was they're about 40, minutes, 40 seconds long. And really, you don't really want an intro that's more than about eight seconds long. But I just didn't want to just do a simple flash intro and then get into it. Because I thought, well, that's not what this channel was all about. Uh, but I have done a few smaller ones for future videos that are quicker. Because what I have noticed in the analytics for videos is the retention rate of people. After about 30, 40 seconds, people just switch videos. So if you don't get to the song really quickly, you you kind of lose uh, lose a lot of viewership. So uh, who have we had join us? So hello Roy, hello from Indonesia. I know I started the feed early. I apologise. It's with the time dissonance. It's all over the place. Um, so who else we got? Rizzle, nice to see you. Yes, we hopefully you've all checked out the final countdown uh that i posted earlier today now yes i've had the feedback that the vocals were off i have actually worked out that i needed to do a 10 percent tune in direction uh or a pitch correction uh on that and i have done it i will decide whether or not it means uploading a brand new video from again but if there's enough people think i should do that uh, i will do uh but obviously i've done the non-vocal version of the final countdown as well for those that want to check that one out uh Auguste, yes, we talked about Alec Bartel. So we've talked a couple of those. So you're, you're going to have to make sure that if you've missed the questions I've covered on that, uh, to go back and watch this afterwards. I'll probably, as I said, upload this as a whole separate video rather than just a live video uh, as a question and answers one. And uh, I'll put some subtitles on here for those as well. Uh, so that will cover that one. So what else have we got on here? Da -da 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 -da. What channels do I watch on YouTube? Because obviously I don't just uh, do reactions all the time. I actually watch a lot of YouTube channels. Uh, I watch tons. Um, but which ones am I actually subscribed? I don't subscribe to many channels. Because there's a lot of people react. Uh, what I have found, especially on my channel, is I get loads of people subscribing with the idea they want me to subscribe to them. Because they want to keep building subscriber bases. And I, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't do that. I only subscribe to an actual channel that I want to watch because I want notifications about that channel. So I do, I watch things like watch Mojo's top 10 lists. I watch, uh, I love watching kids react. I love the kids react thing that makes me laugh. It's brilliant. Um, I watch a channel called Car Throttle uh, about cars. They're quite funny, kind of like another Top Geary type uh, channel. And Linus, Linus Tech Tips is the other one I watch. Uh, so they're my kind of favorites. I've also had questions about whether or not i'm not sure if the person was meaning do i watch every other reaction channels um and as a whole i don't and the reason behind that is i don't want to watch other reaction channels to influence what i do um because i think each person does their own thing uh, occasionally i have watched them and I, what i do find is if when i do watch another reaction channel sometimes i can get frustrated they might have a lot of views but i get annoyed about potentially what they do um or or the lack of what they do on their reaction channel maybe um uh, the thing i've always got frustrated about reaction channels is when it's about sensationalism when it's about doing the oh my god that's amazing when actually if, if you've listened to music you would have heard this style before so you can appreciate someone for their skill you can appreciate someone for their talent but it's not like someone rising from the dead you don't have to be that extreme in my opinion uh hello bung bung uh welcome to the uh topics We've got a few people in chatting which is good chat to yourselves go for it uh so yes, the uh, as far as reaction channels, I actually have reacted to. So I got into reaction channels about four or five years ago. So before I was doing my own one, uh, the first one I ever reacted to was a channel called Weebo Reacts. It's now called Sign Kels actually though. Uh, but Weebo Reacts um, was the first one and I really liked some of his reactions of what he did. And it was just him sitting in his bedroom. I remember him leaning up against his bed, just watching, I think it was Pantera. And it was very, very, very cool. Um, 
and I really, really liked what he was doing. Um, and I actually remember I was doing my craft business at the time, and I, I engraved a pint glass with his uh, his logo for his channel, and I sent that to him via the PO box. Just a heads up, PO box is coming, so if you guys want to send anything for me to check out on the channel, you'll be able to post it. Uh, as soon as I've got that information, I'll be posting it up on some videos, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, the only one I do check out from time to time, there's two that I do occasionally check out, and that is Alex Hefner. Because uh, I quite liked, he's uh, he's a funny funny reactor, so I quite like what he does. Uh, again, he does he likes to do the old clickbait shock element. I can't believe he hasn't heard some of the songs he's heard. Uh, but he's he's a good. I like I like his channel and Lost in Vegas. So I like the guys from Lost in Vegas. They do some good stuff. I remember watching them doing their um, their reaction to Holy Wars by Megadeth, and I've watched that reaction multiple times and their reaction to Metallica's one. Uh, I've watched that several times. That's that's always been quite cool. But as far as that, I do occasionally check in. Like Swalex, if you're on, uh, hello Swalex. Um, I check out yours from time to time when you're doing some stuff. Uh, it's always kind of interesting. Specifically, I like checking out his collaborations with Alec just to see because he's got a really kind of loose uh, flowing drum style. Uh, very different to my drum style. I'm very much on the kind of just solid hard rock where he's got kind of more cool dynamic loose stuff so it's kind of cool to get different viewpoints on the same song uh hello everyone else that's joined hello 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 uh see so go hi tommy uh welcome to the chat um uh, remember if you've got any questions that you want me to answer these are the ones i've pulled off the channel in the comment section uh or on the community pages but if you've got anything you want to ask whack it into here now, I, I use Google Translate quite a lot for answering your comments. I don't know how accurate that is with Indonesian. So obviously, when you guys put comments on one of our pages and you talk about, um, you ask questions or you give me uh, feedback on any of my videos, I will throw that into Google Translate, find out what you mean, and I'll type a response in English and translate it back to Indonesian and post it on the the comment page and hopefully it makes sense i have absolutely no idea how accurate that is but uh you guys will have to let me know um and I, for this video i will be translating as i said i'm gonna i'm gonna load this up as a video separately because i can then put subtitles on it and i will upload this as a separate video uh, later so if you want to come back and answer to all the questions i've answered because i've answered quite a lot of the questions already uh i will throw that up there for you okay uh next question once you're able to attend gigs again which band do you most want to see well that's a simple answer i want to go see the warning um they've always shown really cool high energy performances so i think that would be a really cool one to go check out live it's the sort of one that i would want to go and do the backstage thing so i'd love to interview them talk to them about the channel and obviously share that on here as well so fingers crossed i'll be able to do that one in the future okay what is your favorite heavy metal album um difficult one that one uh i've got three i would put that down to um i have pantera's vulgar display of power which is epic uh motorhead's bastards which is an amazing album and pantera's cowboys from hell um and the reason i picked those ones is i would say they are there's not bad songs on those albums i couldn't find a single bad song on any of those and i can listen to them consistently without having to take them off and not listen to the album for a while and then come back to it there's there's always something you can listen to all the way through so yeah they're my favorite three albums that i've done and they're bastards was 90 92 93 cowboys was 1990 uh no cowboys was 89 I think uh, 91 was Vulgar Display. Uh, okay, what is my favourite? So Bung's asked, what is my favourite cover by Alex? So I've talked about my favourite songs. Pandemic was that one. As far as his actual cover, I would probably say just from the feel of it, the ones I've reacted to, um, I really liked... Um, extremes the one he did more than words because it's a beautiful song and he played it brilliantly well um i liked what he did on hotel california i thought that was very cool 
But yeah, I would say uh, the version of More Than Words is an amazing song, and I thought he did really, really well on that one. Uh, I quite liked the fact that on Toxicity he sang as well. I did like the fact he sang on that one. Uh, so Toxicity was a good cover for him as well. Okay, question. Why don't you put subtitles on every video? Okay, so it takes a while to do subtitles. Uh, a lot of that is because if I don't speak clearly on the video, and I say er uh, a lot, I know I do, so I go, um, um, um. So when I talk about that, when I sort of... Uh, yeah, when I kind of say that, I have to go through the subtitles and edit all those out. So it takes me a little bit of time to correct that, um, um, as he says. Uh, but yes, I can do. I tend to only do it on the Alip, Alip Bartar videos. But if there is enough requests and people mention it in comments on videos, I will see. I think Indonesia is the biggest uh, viewership group for this channel, followed by Japan. So if there's more requests for it, I would do it. So, yeah. Uh, Passio, you, are, uh, are you talking about other styles of music? Like, oh, as you talk about, what are your favourite album in general? So, what's my favourite album in general from all music? That's a difficult one because I don't think there'll be one album above any of the others. Um, I have. There was one question that came up that I haven't answered on here, which I will need to do, which is. Uh, something about soundtrack someone asked me so I forgot for some reason that's not on here I did did cover that one off um, but basically yeah I think I listen to a lot of rock um, I don't think I've got a favourite album not overall that kind of that I can't stop listening to I mean yeah the Pantera one the Motorhead ones are in there there is no none of the big four like Metallica, Megadeth. Although I have got favourite albums of each of the like the big four, which I really like. Um, but there aren't none of them. Kind of go yes, I've got to put them on there. There is bands like FM that you may not have heard of. Their eighties rock, I really like those guys. Uh, Thunder. Ah, it's that's that's a difficult question, Passy. I'm afraid I don't have an actual answer for that one. Uh, I just, I don't think there's an album that I absolutely can't put down. I may have to come back to you on that one. I, maybe I'll do a future video on another on a future stream. I'm gonna have to go through all my all my albums and see if there's anything in there. But uh, so I did get a question that wasn't I forgot to put in my actual list, but I have done it, uh, and it was asked. Passio, would it be possible to help on subtitles? Yeah, I'm not sure how we do that, but you, I think I leave all of my videos open for um, viewership, so people can support in any way. So that I think uh, viewers are able to edit uh, subtitles, title screen. There's there's certain things that is possible for viewers to do. Um, I think it's, as long as you're part of the subscriber community, you are able to do that. So I believe it is possible for you to add subtitles and stuff like that. Uh, it, for me, I, I don't mind doing it. It just I can't do that until I've uploaded the video. And usually what I tend to do is I upload five to six videos all at once. And I do all the quick edits of um, all the keywords and stuff like that. And then I save it. And it's usually the last thing I do before I go to bed. So that's the reason why the subtitles get left until a later date because I've then got to come back in and I have to go through all my subtitles with all the timings and I have to check that what I've said is actually correct. For it. So for instance, when I say the word Alip Barter, it comes up as Alex Barter. So I have to change that to Alip Barter each time. So you have to go through the subtitles and edit the English subtitles after which you can then export it as a document, a CSV file I think it is. And then you can translate it into Indonesian and then reload it back in as an Indonesian subtitle. So it's possible to do. Uh, I just, with the amount of videos I have, it's not beneficial to do it on every single one. Um, so what other videos? Uh, I had a few more on here. Um, would you say that Alip Bartar, or, or would you say that what Alip Bartar does is difficult? I think what Alec Bartar does is takes a lot of skill. However, 
if you put the patience in and you put the work in, a lot of people can play what Alec Bartar does. So I've seen a lot of really good finger style guitar players who play very similar to what Alec Bartar does. So I think it's... Um, I think it's it's good that what he does, I think it's got a certain talent for the ear, the ear to know what to do and when. Um, but as I've said, I don't get massively surprised by a lot of people. I, I find it with the reactors that watch Alec Bartar and, and kind of fall off their chair. I, I just, I, I always kind of start thinking, well, are you actual... Do you know anything about music to understand what t what's involved in doing that? Because if you knew about music, you would know that if you put the practice in, you would be able to do that. If you were so inclined that you really wanted to learn music, if I really wanted to learn fingerstyle guitar playing and wanted to put the effort in, I could play what Alec Bartar does. The question is, I don't have the patience to do it. Um, Oh, so Bung, you've just said Alec number one is the finger style in the number one in the world. I don't know if that's true. There are so many people. It's it's the same question that people say. This is the greatest band in the world. This is the best song in the world. I I had a comment on a video the other day, which frustrates a little bit, but I never get angry. I never get annoyed. I just try to challenge people to think about what they say. And I did a comment on a video which was... seven. I scored something 71 out of 100. And I remember the video. It was Gary Moore and BB King playing. And 71 out of 100 was a really good score on my old scoring system. Um, and I really, really remember what he said was... This person was like, "You're that's ridiculous. He, this is amazing. It's a 500... Oh, you're an idiot or something along those lines. And he said it's a 500 out of 100 score. And I was... You can't have a 500 out of 100. You can't say some... Unless you've seen every guitar player in the world, you can't say someone is number one. It, But in someone's mind, they can do. So I don't take that away from anyone. If someone says that that person is the number one best in the world, I am quite happy for someone to say, that's fine, that's that person. You're, they're number one in the world for you. Cool on you. But you can't ask me to agree with you on that one. What I can say to you is I think Alec Bartar is a great fingerstar guitar player. And I really like his attitude. I like his feel and his emotion that he puts into his playing. So uh, there we go. That's the answer on that particular one, hopefully. Um, so we did this thing about... Uh, I had a question on how do you write songs. Okay, so we're going to cover that one now. Let me pause some music. <clears throat> so how do I approach writing songs? So it very much depends. I need a drink before I do this next bit. Ugh, that's better. So I can go through a period where I'll write, in a week, 10 songs or 10 ideas of a song. I never sit down with the intention of writing. Um, what kind of happens is something like this. I'll just sit there with a guitar and I will do what's called noodling which is I just start playing something and it might be because I've been recording for a collaboration video or something like that. And then I basically just at the end of it, just start playing something. And an idea or I'll get a feel for something or I'll get an idea for something. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll quickly open up Cubase, which is what I use. I'll record that riff idea, that one idea, and I'll leave it. And I'll go back to that when I want to spend a bit of time uh, on it. So for instance, if, if I was just riffing out an idea, I might do something like and I'll just start noodling. So you're kind of playing all over the frets like I'll get an idea for something. So yesterday I started doing one thing um, and I've actually just recorded it down and it was as simple as this.
And that's basically the start of Sonic. And that'll, I'll work that in. I'll do some keyboards over the top. And it's a very much uh, like that. What's that? David, Mr. Dave playing Guns N' Roses. Uh, well, that would be... Uh, That's my little bit of improv jamming for today. But that's basically how a song will start to come forward. And that might turn into an electric guitar bit. It might be a drum part. Sometimes it would be as simple as me walking down the street and I'll just be like, and I'll get this riff in my ear and I'll have to get my phone out and I'll put the recording function on it and I'll just speak into my phone and I will verbally put down a riff idea and then I'll have to get home and work it out. And that's how it comes together. And I might write six songs and then do nothing for six months to a year and then i might do another 10 songs in one go and either way it's just a good fun to mess around with so that kind of comes up with that uh so i had one other question which for whatever reason wasn't on this screen and i thought i'd written it down which came through uh and someone asked me what do i think it was just one of the questions i had soundtrack i talked about soundtracks for music for movies and stuff like that and someone asked me what is the greatest movie soundtrack ever and this again is subjective and i like a lot of different uh soundtracks so i would say it's a difficult one but my favorite soundtrack there's two uh that were in contention uh now well it's three really because i like musicals as well so i really love up tempo musicals so i really like the soundtrack to hairspray the musical Great soundtrack, great songs, real up tempo, 60s, 70s kind of vibe to them, really good fun. Um, you know, kind of a stroke late 50s. Uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, great song, great music. There's a song called uh, Time by Robbie Time. Uh, great, great song. Um, so I really like that one. But my favorite, um, I guess, greatest for me, the greatest soundtracks uh, album that i really like and it's subjected to me it's my greatest is saturday night fever by the Bee Gees. that's just a great album now as i said early on when you asked what is my favorite genre i did say disco is in there because i think disco has got some great grooves to it um i remember watching a behind the scenes thing about the Bee Gees, and they were talking about uh jive talking which is one of the songs off the soundtrack and there's this thing that goes and that's the sound that starts the record off and that came because when they were driving over this bridge the recording studio all the gaps in the road on the bridge that made up each of the sections as the car wheels went over it they were going and that's how they came up with the idea and i love that i love the idea that inspiration stroke stroke striked Stroke or strike, either way, uh, at that moment in time and created part of that song. So I think that's really, really cool. So I believe that was all the questions that I had come through. Uh, I can't see any more that came through on that particular one. So a little bit of summary. So yes, so what we got going on? So the next few months I'll be working on the Project 42 songs. I'll be doing some more collaborations. Uh, I'm going to be doing... I've just started on Avenged Sevenfold's Buried Alive with Alec Butter. So that's the next one I'm working on. I've had requests for Dear God, so I will be looking at that. Um, I will be doing... Um, what else am I going to be doing? I'm going to be doing... I'll do some more reactions on the music Musician Reacts channel of Alec Bartar's stuff. So that will be where I'll be focusing on those ones at the moment. Um, on the Musician Reacts, I've got a reaction to behind the scenes of the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. So I'm going to be doing that one. I've also done a reaction for the Musician Reacts for uh, all the songs for the since 1968 to 2017 of the number one heavy metal song each year, which is quite cool. Um... 
what else? I've just done about, as I said, about 30 reactions have been done. I've got, let me have a quick look if I can find it. Let's have a quick look. So on, let's bring it up. So what have I got in my watch later list? Let's have a quick look. So uh, in my watch later, I've just done In Morning, Dark Tranquility, In Flames, The Birthday Massacre, Earth Drive, Motion Device, uh, Ferion, Diablo Swing Orchestra, uh, Ghoul Town, and obviously the biggest heavy metal band uh, of each year. So they've been done. They were all recorded today. Uh, I've now got uh, Tonight Live, I, or Tonight Alive. I don't know anything about them. I've got In This Moment I'm doing. I've done Seas on the Moon. I've done Ginger. I've done Attila. I've done October Ends. Bee Gees, that's still to be done. Actually, no, October ends. I, ha I don't know. No, no, I have done that one, yes. Uh, Volturian, Metalite, Dust in Mind, more Volturian. Regalia, I've done. Uh, Audius, Mermaid, and Eternal Delusion, I've done. Sin Heresy, I've done. Bandmade, I've done. Baby Metal, BMC, I've done. Nano War of Steel, Uranus, I've done. Uh, Aluma Shade, I've done. Destros, I've done. Burger Kill with Killer Stro, The Elegy, I've done. I've then got to still do it. it. says watch, but I've only just clicked on it, so I know I haven't done it. But I've got Far From Refuge, Amaranth. Uh, I've got Power Surge, Dragon Force, uh, Heaven Shall Burn, Eskimo Callboy. So a lot of these next ones here, these were all songs that you guys have requested on the Your Request. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I had done them. You had requested it on Your Request, and I felt really bad that I hadn't got round to you. You've been put in the comments on that particular video and I hadn't done them, so I'm going to do them. Uh, La Liak in Ciel, I don't know who that is. Cobra and the Lotus, Salatio Mortis, Spirit Box, Gravediggers, Lordy, Extol, Crimson Family, Trivium, DC Talk, The Lazies, Red Eleven, uh, Killing Bord Bordelaire, Nine Inch Nails, Sabaton, Slipknot, Good Boy Daisy, Light the Torch, Necronomicon, Hammerfall, Dimash Kade uh Eclipse, Empire of the Sun I've done. Don't know why that one's down the bottom then. Uh Ikamatra uh Penun Penegu, uh Rockers, which is a Malaysian band, Butterfingers, we're doing VO Pipe, Kalahari, Temptress, uh Amarelio, Scythe the Gang 666, Gold Dash, Brother Fire Tribe, Aldius, Love Bites, and Bright Deer. <sighs> so that's and that's the 72 videos that I have on that channel. And then <laughs> I will get around to doing all of these. I've been I am planning to do them over the next few weeks. Uh and then on this one I've got Phil Oakley and Giorgio Moroder together in Electric Dreams, Wasp and The Who. This is going to be an original versus cover. So The, Who, the Who's The Real Me and The Wasp Real Me. Foo Fighters Run, Dokken Breaking the Chains, Stratovarius Under the Flaming Winter Skies, Collective Soul Shine. Uh, so I've done Foo Fighters, I've done Dokken, I've done Stratovarius, I've done Collective Soul, Volbeat, Heaven Nor Hell done that reaction and I'm going to give you a heads up it's a freaking cool song I really liked it Devo Whip It Volbeat A Warrior's Cool Shallow Side Shine Down uh, Tragic System of a Down Kicks Mosh Mellow Trishula Gre Greta Van Fleet A Day to Remember Kansas The Killers Survivor uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order The Who music video uh, more Greta Van Fleet Rat the Warning Plane Survivor on Rock Band. I had to watch that one. Uh, Liliac Family Rock Band's Real. Stray Kids. Metallica and Lady Gaga pre-Grammy rehearsal. Paramore and Dio. There you go. So that is everything that I am going to be doing. So I have got just over... I've got 112, 113 songs. Plus, obviously, we've got the Patreon requests, which uh, I've just done 12 videos today for those. Uh, I've got obviously the ones that have been uploaded and we've got the live stream today. So uh, there is a lot coming on the channel. I'll obviously be throwing some more Alipas uh, or Alip Bartar videos in there as well. So is there anything else uh, that anyone has got in there? So let's have a quick look for any more comments because I was sorry, I was so busy going on there that I couldn't actually say. 
Uh, harmonic Alec is good. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that is, means if his... Does he play harmonica at some point? If he does, that'd be awesome. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, thank you, Stefan. I, it's not really a reaction, but it's me kind of just talking, as I always do. Uh, Queen is good. Yes, Queen. So Alec does Queen. Um, I liked what he did on that one. So... Uh, thank you everyone for checking out if you, as I said if you want to join the patreon it is greatly appreciated um, I've got to do a lot over the next few months with my work getting quieter uh, and I will then be not really working so obviously I'll be raising funds and patreon is a great way of doing that one and also getting your requests uh, in the channel make sure to check out the Dave does merch store uh, we've got some really cool stuff in the merch store I'm gonna be adding some more stuff in there um very soon if and also the po box will be coming so if you want to send anything in uh to highlight stuff that will be cool i was going to do some merch stuff of a dave does alip batar merch but obviously it's Ale i can't be utilizing alip batar's image or anything like that without his permission so unfortunately i can't do anything like that i don't want to take although i'm sure he'd be fine with it but i don't want to take the risk of anything like that and also there's no way of I would be happy to split the money with him or do it for charity but there's no way of contacting him so if anyone knows Alec Bartar and can get in touch with him so that and tell him to get in touch with me please do so uh, okay Rev we've just asked a really good question let me put the music back on by the way so for those that aren't that interested in what I'm saying you can have a bit of background music uh, let's pick a song this is a song called No Fucking Clue which is what I called it uh, it's a rough guy track for something I'm working on uh right are there any genres styles that you are less likely to appreciate um i'm not a fan of trap um i really don't like trap i have no problem with pop i don't i don't mind pop i don't mind r and B. I quite like rap um i listen to classical i like rock and roll i can even listen to things like poker music i uh, but trap just doesn't really do it for me. Uh, I'm not a big fan of really heavy growling stuff, and I'm not a big fan of operatic style vocals. So um, anything where it's big on like majestic operatic style, it just I just don't doesn't connect with me. Even if the music is great, it just doesn't do that. Uh, any other questions? If there's no, because if there isn't any other questions, you can always send me messages on the bottom of all my videos that has email addresses. Uh, I'm quite open about my email, so if people want to send me, if you, if you send me junk email, I'll just block it. Uh, but if you want to send me an email with any questions, you can. You're more than happy to, more than welcome to. You can whack it in comments, and I actually do see most comments. Um, so I check my comments page 10, 10, 20 times a day, maybe. Uh, especially after posting the video, you always do, uh, and I do tend to read through them. If you write in Indonesian, I will try and translate it as much as I can and try and respond to it. Uh, but I don't respond to everything, especially if it's just sort of saying mantap or something like that, just because I want to make. Uh, I don't want to. I can't be responding constantly. Uh, but if you actually ask a question on there, I will try. So if you make a comment about the vocal levels not being right or something like that, I might try. I'll try to respond and let you know what's going on. Uh, but I want to say a big thank you for everyone that's come on the stream. It is greatly appreciated. Um, what's this question from Darwin? So I was about to sign off there, but this question is coming. How do you think about Alip real life? I'm not sure what that question is, that question means, because I, I only know Alip from what he does in his videos. So i know pretty much what most people know there was that he was a forklift driver and that he did that and he's no longer a forklift driver now and he makes money off that because what i have noticed is that he's now publicized all of his original content is through a record uh, a publishing company now because when all of the reactors um and collaborators do anything with his original content if it's a reaction then it gets copyright claimed and goes to his publisher and if we do a collaboration, we do a share and split. Um, but I've got, I don't know. I don't know what the question really means. Um, I think what he does is great. Um, I think it's interesting to see what style of what he does collaboration wise, because depending on what he does, you can see how many views he gets depending on when he does a cover of a certain era or a certain genre. So 
um, certain songs do more for him than other ones do. So it depends on his viewership, but you can definitely see that reactors have definitely jumped on board with Alec Bartar because they know that the Alipers will check out his videos. Um, I've slowed down on my reactions because I don't know how much I'm going to see. I, I only want to react if I'm pl planning on doing a collaboration. Um, I also found that I was doing so many Alec Bartar stuff that I felt that I was ignoring the subscribers that had actually built my channel up so the nightwish fans and the warning fans and sabaton fans and people like that and bandmaid and baby metal who had supported the channel by being early subscribers and i was focusing all on alip alip bartar stuff and not focusing on a balanced approach hence why i've now tried to do one collaboration a week as my target uh, so as I said, I've just started working on Buried Alive. Um, and I don't want to do more than maybe one reaction to Alec Bartar a week. And then that way I've got a nice balanced approach. I do a little bit of Alipa and then I do some other bands. And I also felt that I was, again, trying to get too focused on big name brands. I wanted to do the smaller bands again. I wanted to go back to what I originally started the channel to do, which was focus on bands that I hadn't heard of, that other people hadn't heard of, and as the subscriber base gets bigger, people get to check out more bands that potentially they haven't heard. So that's kind of where I'm at with that one. But as far as I know, from what I know about it, Bartai, he seems a cool enough guy. Uh, but I don't know. He sounds like, does he have kids? I believe he does. Uh, any other questions? I'm going to give it sort of 30 seconds, and then otherwise I'm going to shut that down. Okay, so what's this question? Cecilio. Cecilio. Uh, in your opinion, which one of Alex's covers that wasn't nailed with original song? Um, in your opinion, which one of Alex's covers that wasn't nailed with an original song? I'm thinking, are you saying in which, which one of his covers wasn't as good as the original? maybe um difficult one that one i think if you think about the song so i actually thought when i heard his version of the final countdown that would have been one that i would have said because he did the music for it but it just it the whole idea of the final countdown was a high energy song playing it slower and the way he did it it didn't really because it did the final countdown. Da, 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 da. It doesn't transcend from a fast song to a slower song. So I think that didn't work as well in a slower song. I hope that with the speeding it up and keeping what he's doing in there, it just feels more natural now. Um, apart from that, every other one I've heard of his, I think Toxicity as well, being that much slower, it. It it needs that drum change that dum da da dum dum ba ba bum bum ba bum 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 ba da da da. With him playing it a lot slower, it it kind of loses some of the intensity and the vibe of the original. And you can get away with that on certain songs, but I think on those two songs, Toxicity and Final Countdown, it took away from the song. Whereas with Carrie and Bohemian Rhapsody, I think they they work really well compared to the original. Um, so I think that's what you were asking the question of there, but uh, hopefully that's answered it. Uh, any other questions from people in the room? So just going to round up then. So as I said before, please make sure if you want to support the channel, you've got the, uh, as I said, you've got the uh, Patreon, which is a good way. You've got the merch store, stuff like that. So always greatly appreciate anything you can do to help keep the channel going as i said patreon is my best way of doing it because it's a good way of keeping in touch with me the free five and a ten dollar patreon cool way to do that keep an eye out i will be posting new project 42 tracks uh if anyone out there knows a good singer uh, and lyricist that would like to help me with some projects including if they're a good singer and want to do some collaboration and join in with the ed bartar collaborations get them to send me an email email details are in the description and i'll get in touch and we'll, we'll go from there um keep an eye out for more videos over the next week and i think that is everything so thank you very much to everyone that's joined the call or the video and i will see you all some point very very soon with another live stream i'll do another live stream in november and yeah all the best take care bye bye